It's vacation time, and vacations are one of the most favorite ways for families to slow down, reconnect, and make some new memories. After a year of being locked up in our homes, I think we are all due for some getaways, right? Well, now while vacation having is a lot of fun, vacation planning, not so much. Which brings me to today's guest. Deanne Samuel is my sister-in-law and has been making dream vacations happen for her clients for over four years as she works with Key to the World Travel. She specializes in Disney vacations, but is able to book trips anywhere around the world for you. In today's episode, she shares with us some of her pro tips for making your Disney trip more stress-free, budget-friendly, and magical. We bust the major myth around travel agents being expensive, Spoiler alert, they're free to you. And she explains how you can have one and why everyone needs a travel agent. She also pulls a little secret out of her back pocket that she uses for her own family trips to share with you today. This episode is loaded with vacation-y goodness just in time for you to get away with your family. Listen up, share this episode, and let's dream of magical destinations together as Deanne unpacks all of her genius, saving us time, money, and a few headaches. Cue up that intro music. Hi, and you're listening to Java with Jen with your host, Jenna Lee Samuel. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining. This month, we've been focusing on family topics, and one of the biggest things that relates to families, especially this time of year, is vacations. We love making memories with our little ones. We love getting out and about and doing all the fun things. And Disney is one of the top family destinations. But right now, you know, we're still dealing with COVID restrictions and stuff. So I wanted to have my sister-in-law, Deanne Samuel, who is a travel agent. And I wanted to have her on so she could speak from her place of expertise um, what it's been like to plan trips, plan vacations, and how you can still have a great time with your family, even amidst COVID. So we're going to talk Disney. We're going to talk a little bit outside of Disney and just going to pull on Deanne's expertise. So Deanne, thanks for being with me. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay. So, all right. So I did a little intro of you earlier. Tell us how long you've been doing travel. Um, I'm going on four years now. That's awesome. And you are a Disney fanatic. So that seems like that's where you put a lot of your travel focus, but you can do stuff outside of Disney, correct? Yes. I, I mainly focus on uh, family vacations. I have a family of five, so we love our family vacations at Walt Disney World, Universal. And so that's where I, I put my time into to learn about that's for awesome. us, for my own family. That's awesome. And you're so good at it. And, and you guys actually will mention it at the end. But if you want to go follow Deanne on Instagram, um, you can look up Deanne Samuel, A-N-N-D-E-A-N-N. -N -N, um, or you can look up Disney Traveling Princess is her handle. And she frequently is posting videos and pictures of her time at Disney. I love watching it because it feels like a little bit of an escape every time I see a post from her. So, um, okay. So Deanne, tell us real quick. What technically do you provide for people um, in planning their trips? We have some questions to you as a travel agent. I know I had a lot of misnomer beliefs about travel agents, so I want to dispel some of those. So what do you technically do for people that would make them want to use your services? What I do for people, so now the quotes, I can book your reservation, I process payments. Um, you know, those are things that we keep on file. I have a lot of clients who will just text me and say, Hey, can you make a hundred dollar payment or whatever? I'll process it. Send you the confirmation. It's done easy. I make phone calls to change reservations. I have one right now. I've been working on a name change and you know, sometimes those lines can get backed up to three hours or more. Um, I do that for you. I do the research, dining reservations, um, you know, special activities or tours, um, help plan out your day, kind of, you know, what's, what's going to be good for your family or your children and um, different activities or different rides that you like. Um, I book flights. Um, you know, I can add that onto the package. And basically, I mean, there's a lot. So it sounds like it sounds like the primary benefits of working with a travel agent is people save time and they save money. Correct. Yes. Okay. So now tell me then how do, how do people save money? If I always thought travel agents were kind of a splurgy, luxurious thing, like for the rich and famous who want someone's special help. 
but you have taught me that there's no extra fees for using a travel agent. Correct. No, it's all included um, in the price of your vacation. So if you go on a Disney um, on, online or if you go on a Universal or a cruise, our fee is already in that package. You're, but people don't know that our fees are already in there and they pay us. So no, no matter what, you're going to pay the same price, basically. Okay, so basically the, the companies like Disney and Carnival Cruises and Royal Caribbean and all those people, they already build in a percentage for travel agents that might use them. So we pay the same whether we use you or not. Exactly. It's, it's already built in there. So if you, don't, if you don't use a travel agent, you're still paying it, but you just don't get the extra services. There's oh. no 1-800, you know, Disney agent who's going to sit and talk to you for hours and help you plan out your day. Um, so you, you're paying that fee, but you just won't get our services. Oh my goodness. Okay. So if the travel agent doesn't cost extra money, but she saves you time and, and Deanne was telling me earlier that travel agents are privy to early releases and specials, and then they get first access to those things. So they can actually get, um, deals for you for your trip that you might not be able to find otherwise, or by the time you find it, it could be sold out. Is that right? Right. We get um, emails. Sometimes we'll get little hints from our owners, you know, the day before, oh, be ready. Something's going to, you know, come out soon. We'll get, um, you know, there's, like I said, um, there's like over 500 agents in our company. So we're constantly working with each other. And, you know, there's there's people all over that hear things or that they know, you know, something's coming and we can, um, we all work together as a big travel agent family to help our clients save money and and get the best deal that they can. And they love it. We love it when we can help somebody and make them happy and save them, you know, a few hundred dollars in it. It just makes, it makes everybody happy. It's a win-win. That's so great. So what is it that exactly made you decide to become a travel agent? I know you loved Disney. You know, I was, I was just praying for an at-home job. Basically I have three kids. We started homeschooling. Um, I wanted something that could help family bring in a little extra income but mainly something for myself as well something that I can do that I love Mm -hmm. Um, and I love getting to talk to people and talk about Disney Um, my nickname is the Disney lady around here everybody calls me that it's just it's my thing it makes me happy and you know I can do it all the time and um, it's a good reason to go back to Disney and (laughs) I've my clients on the latest (laughs) the latest stuff that's out that's so true. I'm still waiting for the opportunity where me and Deanne can take a sister trip to Disney. I think that'd be great. Yay. <laughs> okay. So, um, what are some cool secrets that you can tell us about Disney that make it more exciting or maybe just little tips even that can help people get the most out of their Disney trip? I know you pull a lot of this into your travel agent services, but what are just, you know, for our listeners, what's something interesting? Well, probably the first thing would be is to use a travel agent. Definitely. <laughs> to get a whole- extra help. Um, you know, it's, it's like having a, a extra soccer mom around that can help you take your kids back and forth. You have a third person or, or second person there, you know, on the inside, helping you out, getting your reservation and things behind the scene that you may not have done before. Yeah. Um, so second, um, I would say plan your trip early book before, um, you know, dining releases for Disney 60 days ahead of time. Um, book before those days so you can get the dining reservations you want. A lot of people skip dining. They don't, they, they want to go to the park all day. They don't sit down and have a nice meal at the end of the day. And then they're worn out. I tell people to at least book a nice evening meal a couple of times while they're there so they can sit down. Um, you know, right now with COVID, we have the mask restrictions, so you have to wear masks all day. So if you sit down, you take a break for an hour and a half, you can take your mask off you know, enjoy a nice meal with the family and get off your feet. Um, Another thing I tell people is try to take an off day. You don't have to go to the parks five days in a row because your feet are going to be hurting and then you're not going to want to go back. Yeah. Um, Go a couple of days, take a day at the resort, um, swim by the pool. Also staying on property Mm -hmm. at Disney World is literally the size of San Francisco. It's huge. So Staying off property, you can do. We've done before. It's not something I like. I like staying on property. They give you free transportation. Um, you know, you can be at some of the parks. If you stay near the Skyliner, you can be there in 10 minutes instead yeah. of driving, packing your kids in a van. And it's just a lot of work. Um, if you stay on property, you just grab your backpack, get on the bus or Skyliner, and you're there 
Um, and then if you want to go back to your resort in the afternoon and take a break, you can go jump in the pool for a couple hours and go back to the park later. So um, definitely book early, stay on property, use a travel agent. I would say those are my top three. That's great. Those are really good. Okay. So speaking of, you mentioned COVID briefly. I know I have wondered about this. Like I want to take my kids to Disney. I don't know that I want to have to mess with COVID. I'd, I'd rather wait till it's over. Is it worth traveling either Disney or even to all inclusive resorts or on a, well, cruises aren't open yet. I don't think, but um, is it worth traveling and doing vacations right now, even with COVID restrictions? Definitely. Because um, number one, you know, everybody's been locked up for the past I don't know, year, it feels like, and we're able to get back out. We need to get out and make these memories and get our family out of the house for a little while and make memories with your family. And secondly, we're also supporting an industry that is suffering. I know people think, oh, Disney's got money, Universal, Cruises, whatever, they all have money, just like, you know, all these other companies, but they're hurting. Mm-hmm. There are so many hundreds of thousands of people that are hurting that work at the parks, travel agents, um, you know, managers and people that um, I'll say insurance companies, people, you know, we have insurance suppliers, we have, we have transportation companies, everybody has been affected by, um, COVID. So get get out and stimulate the economy and go to Disney and make some good memories with your family. Uh, (laughs) Perfect. Okay. So speaking of stimulating the economy, um, tell us some little ways. I know when I'm traveling with little ones, a, they want everything they see. Um, They want souvenirs and we want to give them souvenirs, but holy crap, Disney's expensive. So how do you, as like a family, save money when you go to Disney? I know I I have some tricks up my sleeve that I've heard in years past that I've tried, um, like go and buy Disney paraphernalia at the local Walmart and at Dollar Tree and bring them out every day as souvenirs for your little tiny ones who don't know the difference. You know, what do you guys do to save money? You can do that. Um, we don't do that anymore because I like my Disney stuff, but <laughs> I will say there is, I'll give y'all one tip. I don't want to tell everybody because I like going there and everything gets taken, but I'm sure they, there's a lot of people that know about it. So there's a Disney parks outlet near, um, it's on off of I drive in Finland. There's actually two of them in Orlando. Um, mm-hmm. one called the character warehouse. And then I can't remember the other name of the other one. It's a Disney outlet for the park. So their merchandise comes directly from the park. So you can get coffee mugs for like $5 and t-shirts for 10. So I don't go there all the time, but I go there often. And I'm like, you know, Disney hall right there. We do buy merchandise at the park too. Um, Another thing you can do to save money. um, If you stay at the property uh, on property for $19.99, you get a cumbler and you get free ref- refills at the resort all week. So for 20 bucks, your kids can have drinks, soda, coffee, juice um, at the resort. So that's helpful. Um, another thing we do is we always get a popcorn bucket. And um, we just came back and we actually ended up getting two popcorn buckets. But they're like $15 and then $2 to refill. So we'll get one or two of them. And our whole family of five will just share and snack on that all day and refill it for $2. Um Smart. So water is free. If you ask for a cup of water at the little carts or restaurants, it's free. You can get a bottle of water, but you can get a cup of water also. Those are great tips. I know something that I found last, I took my older two to Disney with my parents a couple of summers ago. And we found that every time we'd pass by like a meal cart or whatever, they were like, I want some food. I want some of this. I want, I want a churro. I want an ice cream bar. I want a pretzel. And so one thing we did that helped, and I know you could probably talk about the meal plans, actually. um, But one thing we did is we gave our kids, because they were a little bit older, we said, listen, here is $20 or $30, whatever you want to do, for your food today. This will buy your meal, we'll buy your dinner, but here is for any of those extras you want to get a snack or even for lunch, whatever. And so then, then they had to actually think through what's worth spending my money on. And so it took pressure off of me and my dad. And then it put it back in their hands. But then they felt kind of empowered. They could splurge where they wanted to. And they could buy a, a cheaper lunch at, you know, a little kiosk instead of a restaurant, you know, or whatever. So that's one thing we did. Yeah. Um, yeah, my kids do it, too. They want to eat everything, especially my teenage son. I could stop eating. <laughs> uh, one thing you can do um, right now, dining plans are not available um, just because of COVID. They have not brought those back yet. Um, they're great you know, when they're there, but they're not there right now. Okay. Um, 
that you can, and we've done this, we did this a couple of years ago. We went to like Target or, um, I know Target, you can use, they have like a 5% off like the debit, I want to say debit card or credit card. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can use that and get, they have Disney gift cards there and get a little bit off your Disney gift card. So you can buy like a 50 or a hundred dollar gift card. Um, and get a little bit off of that. But we bought um, our kids gift cards before and just gave them the gift card and said, okay, this is your card and you got a hundred dollars or whatever's on it. And that's your money for the the whole week for souvenirs or whatever extra they want to buy. Um, and it kind of helped us separate because we only have three kids and like we didn't do it this past time. And we were trying to keep track of who spent what and how much and like, okay, what did you buy? What did you buy? Um, yeah. So it's easy you separate their money on like a little card and it makes them feel like, I don't want to say empowered, but kind of like, okay, I'm a big guy. I'm, I'm a big girl. I got my little gift card and I can buy, you know, what I want. Um, and it, and it helps you know that, okay, you're out of your money and, and that's it. Yeah. You know, so. That's great. That's such a good idea. And so what about, um, this brings me to another question. Some of these things, you know, when we go to the park, it's like, what's worth splurging on? What's not worth splurging on? So what would you say is worth splurging on and what is not worth splurging on? Um, I'm thinking of like the photo pass situation. I don't know if they're still doing those. Yes, they have those out. That's definitely something you need to do. We do it every time we go to Disney. I did not do it this time. And then when we got there, they, they gave, they just gave the notice that you can take your mask off during pictures now. So I was really bummed that I didn't buy it. Um, what is the, but, explain it again for those who don't know. So the Memory Maker, it's $169 if you purchase it early, like before your trip. It's $199, I think, if you purchase it within three days of your trip. Um, so you get all your photos um, at the park. There are photographers all around the park. You get your ride pictures added on there. Sometimes they'll do like a cute little video of Woody or Buzz or, or whoever like coming out and on your face or like on your, <laughs> while you're on the ride, they're coming out and doing something. So uh, they, you can order, um, you get a free download with it off the, you know, off the uh, website or on your phone, you can download them. And then I normally spend an extra $30 and order a, a disc just so mm-hmm. I have it. I've actually ordered um, Christmas ornaments off of there because um, you can get like ornaments and different things made with it. That's super cool. Oh. Yeah. I think we did the photo pass when I went actually that same trip with the older two boys and um, my sister bought it for all of us. And it was great because I think what makes it even is an advantage above your phone is you don't have to worry about the quality of picture you're going to get. They're going to be great quality photos because they're using great cameras and their photographers, what they're doing. And they know the best places to stand to get the best. And they put everyone in it. A lot of times dads or moms get stuck out because somebody has got to take the picture. Um, but everybody's in it. They do magic shots. Sometimes they'll put like Tinkerbell flying over you or Lumiere will be like in your hand. So that's always fun. And they don't tell you what they're doing. So you don't know until, um, you know, you get your picture on your phone. You're like, oh, look, you know, oh, it's, well, that's it's cool. I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what would you say is not worth splurging on? Not worth splurging on at Disney. That's tough. I know because Disney's smart <laughs> about what they do, right? They're very smart, and we we spend money on all kinds of things at Disney. So, you know what's not worth splurging on is the parking. <laughs> well, let me tell you, if you stay at the resort on property, you will get free parking if you decide to drive your car. However, I don't do that because I just take the free transportation. Yeah. But parking is, yeah, $25 a day. So if you stay off property, you have to drive over there and park, and um, it's a long walk. Those parking lots are big. It's not like Walmart. It's like twice or three. Like, it's huge. The parking lots are enormous. Um, I'd say, um, I don't know, maybe water because you can get free water. What else? Um, I would say don't, don't um, you know, overdo it. If you're, if you're not on the dining plan, you know, like we just went and we, um, we did one character meal. You have to pay out of pocket for those right now because there's no dining plan. Those are $60 a person. Oh, gosh. Um, and we have five, so it's not exactly cheap. But I like to do maybe one, like a new one that we haven't done. So you don't have to go crazy. If you have little kids, they're great because they can see the characters and you don't have to stay in the line to see them. Another thing is 
you don't have to order meals for each person, depending on how ki- big your kids are. Um, if you go to a quick serve place, and I know it's vacation, but a lot of times me and my girls will share a meal because we're just not hungry. So instead of getting five $15 meals, we'll get three and maybe, you know, an extra order of fries and we'll share. And, and then we'll grab a big pretzel or popcorn and we're fine. Yeah. So um, it's just, you know, it's just using wisdom and, and kind of, you know, going about your budget just because you have a budget or you're, you might not have as much as somebody else doesn't mean you can't go to Disney. There's always ways to work around, you know, don't go crazy on food, bring some snacks, share a meal, you That's know, nice. Those are good tips. I know I've, I, a lot of people don't realize that at Disney, because a lot of theme parks, you can't bring your own food in. But at Disney, they let you bring your own food in. They do have lockers. I don't use lockers because the parks are just very large. We usually carry a backpack around. Um, there's a lot of people that do use lockers. Um, I've, had to, I've had to use them on occasion. I will say that. Um, you know, buying souvenirs. Now, if you stay on property, they'll ship your souvenirs back to your room and you don't have to carry them around all day. Um mm-hmm. The extra benefit, um, especially if you go too crazy like me, sometimes I have a whole bag full. <laughs> They'll ship it back for you. Um, That's awesome. I would say, I would say too, thinking back on my trips, I think some of the things now I always go to Disneyland versus Disney World, and Disneyland is a lot more manageable as far as size. You can walk from one end of one park to the other end of the other park in probably 30 minutes, um, you know, just walking all the way across. And so we walked an average of like 12 miles a day. So I would recommend really great sneakers that are going to be comfortable. And I, I always bring ibuprofen that way when everything does start swelling and getting uncomfortable, I just take ibuprofen and it takes care of it. (laughs) Yeah. Normally I take uh, my Tylenol when I get there, because if I overheat, I get fever blisters and like, you know, it's just not, it's not nice. So I usually take that with me. I carry hand sanitizer and, and that's, um, you know, something with the new COVID regulations. There's hand sanitizer at the park. Um, that's one thing I didn't talk about, if you want to talk about that. Um, I'm getting sidetracked from what you need to bring in your bag. Tunnel, hand mm-hmm. sanitizer. Baby wipes are good. Even when you have 15-year-olds, a little pack of wipes to wipe the sticky hands off so you don't have to run to the restroom. A phone charger. Yeah. Um, a really good thing that they offer at uh, Walt Disney World, they have this at Universal too. It's called a fuel rod. Um, I've seen them in some airports also. And it's $30. I bought one a couple of years ago. But they have stations all around Walt Disney World and at the resorts. And you just pop your little charger in there whenever it, it's dead. And you get a new one that's already charged. And you can hook your phone back up. Um, my phone dies often because I do a lot of pictures and videos and things. So that's a lifesaver. Um, so those are good things to pack. Um, yeah, I would say for sure. Cause we didn't, we didn't, um, invest into a charger at the park cause they were like 30 bucks, mm-hmm. but I bought one ahead of time and I just charged it every night. And that way I knew, cause your phone battery will die faster because pictures and camera takes more memory or more, um, battery life. And uh, especially if you're getting on Instagram and Instagramming stuff, you know, and whatever your battery will die quickly. Um, yeah. The other, oh, the other thing is at Disneyland, some of the lockers had a built-in charging port inside the locker. So then you can lock up your battery charger, recharge it while you're running around. And that was super helpful. At Disneyland, because it's smaller, we use lockers every time. We just find lockers that are between the two parks. And that way, when we're going from one park to the other park, we can always make a stop off at the locker and it's not very far away. And we also keep snacks with us. Like you're saying, we would bring like little oranges, little apples, granola bars, beef jerky, stuff like that. That way you can munch when you're standing in line. If you're getting hungry, you're not going to have to wait two hours. Especially if you have kids because they're like in the middle of the line and they're like, I'm hungry. So you got to pull something out or, and you don't want to get out of line to go get a snack. Um, Not if it's a 30 minute line. Yeah. And when you're walking 12 miles a day, you're Mm -hmm. constantly burning calories all day long and so right. you're gonna be hungry and so and uh, another thing is bring sunblock because it's florida and it's sunny and hot <laughs> and wear a hat um uh, red face you know they're they're burning up and i'm like put a hat on please uh-huh. cover your- i would say if you go to disneyland as opposed to disney world like deanne's the travel expert on disney world i'll be the expert on disneyland i've been there like 30 times um 
with Disneyland, the climate is such that in the morning, it'll be like 50 degrees. It'll be chilly. Yeah. And then by the afternoon, it's like 80 something. So you're sweating. And then by the evening, it's getting down into the 50s right. and 60s again. So when I go to Disneyland, I always bring a change of clothes that's warmer um, or I'll wear it and then I'll change it to something cooler in the afternoon and then yeah. I'll change it back into my warmer stuff. And so like, that's the reason for the locker. Yeah, that's helpful. Okay, so last thought, if people are not interested in taking a Disney trip, but they'd rather do something else, what are some of your favorite um, vacation destinations outside of Disney? Ooh, well, I love Universal, but if they're not in a theme park and um, something else I can do, people don't know, I can, I can um, book out beach houses. You know, we have a, I live in Louisiana, so we have a lot of people who love to go to the beach um, since cruising is not an option right now. You know, Destin, Florida has some nice beaches, Orange Beach, Alabama, all-inclusive resorts. A lot of people don't realize that all-inclusives, those are pretty affordable. Um, you know, if you can go on a cruise or if you can go to Walt Disney World, you can do an all-inclusive. And mm -hmm. right now, you know, there's different restrictions for different things. But other than a COVID test, I've had several people go and they've all come back good. <laughs> Everybody's good. Um, I'm, I'm leaving on Sunday for an all-inclusive uh, stay in Mexico. So... I'll be touring um, Dreams Vista and uh, some Breathless Resorts and getting some more info on that. But those are family friendly. They're not just for adults. And, and when you go, it's great because you don't have to pay for food. You know, it's all included. So that's awesome. Now, um, with that, I know that there's been some talk of like vaccine passports. And do people have to be vaccinated to be able to do the, the Mexican resort or anything like that? No. Not right now. Um, you just have to get a COVID test to come back into the U.S. And that's something that these places like um, Dreams and uh, Sandals Resorts, they're offering that on property. So you don't even have to leave. They have, you know, a room designated for that. You go down, they give you your time. You go down there. Um, they swab you, you know, 10 minutes. And then you're free to go back to the resort. And then they deliver your um, uh, paperwork. And there have, not my clients, there have, I've heard, um, you know, a few people that have gotten tested positive and had to stay there. But these places are offering two weeks free for you to quarantine there. Of course, you have to quarantine in the room. But, um, you know, people are, are concerned about that. Yes, you might get stuck there. Um, hopefully not. <laughs> Everybody, that, all my clients have come back. They've all been good. I'm heading out. Um, we've had travel agents traveling the past few months and all tons of resorts. And they've all come back clean. I mean, um, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'd kind of like to get stuck in an all-inclusive resort for two weeks. <laughs> okay, well, I know you've got to go get your daughter. Um, but Deanne, thanks so much for getting on here and sharing these tips and these pointers. Lastly, how can people connect with you? If they're like, yes, I'm sold. I want to use your services. How can they do that? Um, well, they can look me on my Instagram at Disney Traveling Princess. They can message me. Um, they can email me. It's uh, My email is d dot samuel at key to the world travel.com it's kind of long sorry um you can email me message me i'm on facebook uh, they can call you jen and message you and say what's your sister-in-law's <laughs> number or name um so yeah i'm on there I, I reply quickly on instagram i get my notifications so if i got a new request i'll respond Okay, excellent. Will you guys be watching on Instagram? If you guys are not already following her, go follow her, Disney Traveling Princess. If you're not already following me, follow me, Java with Jen. And when I post this up, of course, I frequently will throw her in my stories to remind you guys how awesome she is and that you can connect with her. It is vacation time. Deanne can save you the headache. She can save you the money. She can save you the time of planning your dream vacation. So connect with Deanne and make some new memories. That's exciting. Thanks, Jen. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Have fun. We'll catch you guys later. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. For those of you who've rated or shared this podcast on social media, thank you. Reading your comments and reviews always means so much to me. Listen, let's stay connected. Come follow me on Instagram at Java with Jen, where you can follow the latest and say hey. It's a really great way to stay in touch. Many of you have also asked how you can support the show. 
You can make donations through the Anchor app or on Patreon, or of course, by sharing, rating, and reviewing on social media and iTunes as well. Thank you to each of you for your ongoing support. Your heartfelt feedback always reminds me why I do this. Until next time, remember, you've got this and God's got you.